What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Son of a Tech once again, and today I have a video discussing essentially the differences between the Super Super Clocked Edition and the For the Win Edition of the EVGA GTX 1060, as well as the improvements in the NVIDIA drivers. Stick around. So here is the EVGA GTX 1060 Super Super Clocked Edition and you might recognize it because it looks very similar and is very similar to the For The Win Edition from the same company EVGA. Essentially the cooler is going to be the ACX 3.0 cooler with the exact same size fans and same heatsink design. The differences is mainly going to be within clocks and within power draw. So the advertised max power draw of the For The wind is going to be 150 watts while the max power draw of the super super clocked is the base 120 watts. Now in real world performance it didn't come out quite to that through the 8 pin connector that we see on this card. The peak power draw for the for the win edition was 217 watts while the peak power draw on the super super clocked was 140 watts. There is still quite a huge difference there if you're looking at power power supplies for the graphics card you're going to purchase. Now does that translate into power later on down the lines? Well let's take a look at that. So when we hop into our overclocks we'll see that the max attainable overclock for the For The Win edition was 2113 megahertz while the super super clocked max attainable was only 2075 megahertz. In real world performance though we had to knock the super super clock down to 2060 while the For The Win maintained stability at 2113. Before we move on too much further I did want to mention that the the Super Super Clocked Edition definitely still has the same inputs that the For The Win Edition has. Display ports include three DisplayPort 1.4 ports, a single HDMI 2.0B port, and of course the DVI port. The higher power draw of the For The Win Edition also shows to translate in temperatures, reaching a max temperature of 64 degrees Celsius during testing on stock fan pro files. The Super Super Clocked Edition takes the card here or the advantage here maintaining 59 degrees Celsius on stock fan profiles albeit at a lower power consumption rate and of course lower clock rates. Now we really want to sit back and see if these clocks are worth it when we get into games. The best thing to start off with is going to be the synthetic benchmark so you guys can see what they are at. I need to point this out to you all because the difference here is that the For The Win Edition was on a quite a bit older driver while the Super Super Clocked is on the latest latest 675.63. For real world gaming performance this has definitely improved the numbers for the Super Super Clocked Edition and unfortunately I no longer have the For The Win Edition to adjust the numbers with. So starting off with Time Spy at default settings the Super Super Clocked Edition scored 4,389 points while the For The Win Edition actually was a little lower at 4,382. Moving on on to Fire Strike, the Super Super Clocked Edition scored 13,712 points, while the For The Win had scored 13,491. Now we can sit back and probably determine that higher clock rates are not always better, especially in reference to the newer Pascal line. This is interesting because some of the wins coming from the Super Super Clocked Edition implies that more power doesn't necessarily mean better for Pascal. Scale, which is only further confirmed in these real world tests. Starting out with Rise of the Tomb Raider on very high with SSAA times 4, the minimum frame rate for the Super Super Clocked was 15.5 FPS, while on the Fur the Win was 13.36, and the average was 43 frames per second on the Super Super Clocked, while the Fur the Win was at 39.36, and the max was 96.6 on the Super Super Clocked, and an 81. 18 on the For The Win. This only continues with Forza Horizon 3, where the minimum on the Super Super Clocked 
was 48.9 and the minimum on the for the win was 31 and the average was 77 for the super super clocked and the for the win was 61.15 now finally the max on these cards was 104 on the super super clocked and an 87.4 on the for the win keep in mind that you're going to see more drastic changes in the games that have come out more recently such as forza horizon 3 because we are on directx 12 and uwp and that's a very very new platform we're seeing lots of improvements throughout new drivers for nvidia as we move forward a game that hasn't received very many changes at all is total war warhammer and on the ultra preset the super super clock scored a minimum of 71 with an average of 78.3 and a max of 81 the for the win here was right on par with a minimum of 73.5 an average of 77.4 and a max of 80 this one's important because because this has gotten the least amount of improvements through drivers from Nvidia from what I can tell on patch notes. For Deus Ex Mankind Divided we once again see very similar performance throughout both of these cards with the Super Super Clock receiving a min of 32.4 compared to 31.7 from the For the Win and an average of 40.2 compared to a 39.4 on the For the Win and a max of 49.3 which is compared to a max of 48.5 on the For the Win. Now finally the last game that we're going to see here is going to be Gears of War 4 and once again this game is pretty new as well and you're going to see some more drastic differences here in the numbers thanks to the improvements in the drivers and the time between frames which you want to be smaller is 10.7 milliseconds on the super super clocked while on the for the win it was at 11.6 milliseconds and the minimum average frame rate was 76.5 fps on the super super clocked while it was 71.1 on the for the win keep in mind that these numbers are from when the game first first released and then finally the average frame rate was 93.2 Two on the super super clocked and an 86.4 on the for the win so in conclusion this doesn't necessarily mean that the for the win is a bad card or performs worse than the super super clock the main point I want to make here is that the improvements on the power consumption or the increase on the power consumption and the increase on the clock speeds for Pascal do not show the same performance benefits that they show on something like the newer line of AMD cards in the FX series this means that I don't find it necessary to go ahead and purchase or pay a premium for a GTX 10 series card at this time some of the things you want to focus on more would probably be along the lines of cooling which at this point is pretty much the same between the super super clocked and the for the win I don't think that even if we bumped up the drivers from the for the win edition to the current that we would even see much of a performance improvement over the current numbers we see for the super super clock I also want to include these numbers so you guys know that I do test every card with the latest drivers and I see the improvements so if I sat down here and saw that there is a huge improvement between Gears of War 4 on the GTX 1060 and I then need to go sit down and can reassess my comparisons between the RX 480 and the GTX 1060. If anything new comes up I'll definitely make a video of it and it'll probably go up on a Tuesday because I would love for y'all to like comment and subscribe and then I will see you next Tuesday.